preparing them for a calendar full of chances to save lives. A plan to give abortion the boot all over the country. Finished uh, abortion recovery with Angela and she the medical clinic that aims to serve 100,000 women and save 10,000 babies in just five years. Plus, what makes God stop and pay attention? Author and pastor Derek Greer shares the keys to jumpstarting your faith and living a life that honors God. All on today's 700 Club Interactive. Hello and welcome to the show. Hurricane Dorian hit the Caribbean as a Category 5 and left a path of utter destruction. Wrecking homes, shredding roofs, flipping cars, and toppling power lines for more than 40 hours. And it's estimated that $2 billion worth of reconstruction is needed to get the islands back to normal. Tyler Perry, known for his charitable giving in the Atlanta, Georgia area, is focused on helping the Bahamas. The movie icon used his personal plane to ship water, hygiene items, sleeping bags, diapers, and other necessities down to the hardest hit areas. He's made at least two trips so far and plans to do more. On his way back home, Tyler brought back several passengers, including a pregnant woman who needed medical attention and some small children. Tyler had posted on his social media accounts that he would help the island rebuild after the storm had passed, saying, to all the incredible people of the Bahamas who have welcomed me and called me an adoptive son, I want you to know that I am watching closely and as soon as I can, I will be there to do whatever I can to help you rebuild stronger and better. That's what they need to hear down there right now, isn't it? And such a help actually bring transporting people yeah. is so crucial too. And of course, you know, with this storm, the buildup was so incredible, the media coverage and the storm lived up to uh, the predictions and even more. And, and then it left the news cycle quick. Yeah. I mean, really the Hurricane Dorian devastation on Bahamas left the news cycle earlier than I think a lot of people thought you it would. You know where else that happened was in the panhandle of yes, Florida absolutely. last year. I mean, those people are still suffering. They too, are. But they it, truly it are. It takes the Tyler Perrys of the world to say, I'm going to join in with whatever help is coming your way, and we're going to make a difference. I was down in Panama City Beach about uh, five days after that storm oh. last October, and, uh, you know, the week in between had really done nothing, and, you know, that was out of the media, too. These storms come, they go, and then people still suffer for months, even years. Absolutely. It's a great work he's doing. Well, earlier this summer, we told you about the Norfolk Police Department going viral after performing a lip sync of Bruno Mars' song, Uptown Funk. The department recently became the national lip sync champions and was awarded $100,000. Now they're in the news again, serving their community in a sweet new way. That's right. The police department has launched an ice cream truck. And look how happy. I love that. It's Norfolk's <laughs> newest initiative to foster better relationships with the community. Officers go into neighborhoods and give out free ice cream to kids and families as part of a mission to develop authentic relationships with the community. According to the department, the ice cream truck continues Norfolk's tradition of community outreach firsts as it's the first fully operated ice cream truck owned by a law enforcement agency in Virginia. Well, the Norfolk Police Department believes that by being out and about and getting to know people, the public is encouraged to speak up when a crime occurs. They also believe the truck is preventing crime before it even happens. I think it's a great That's idea. That's fantastic. Doesn't this stuff look good, too? The ice cream, yeah. the popsicles? <laughs> I was one of those kids, unfortunately, when the ice cream truck used to come around. I used to, like, follow it for miles on my bike. It was really <laughs> pathetic and sometimes didn't even catch it. Very sad. But in this case, of course, in Norfolk, the ice cream truck's coming to you. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> uh, in other news, an assistant principal in Marion, Ohio, is going viral after a photo of him with a student was shared on social media. John Smith, a longtime teacher in Garfield Elementary School's newest assistant principal, is seen on the pavement stretched out next to LJ Compton, an eight-year-old student. LJ has Down syndrome and is on the autism spectrum. So when his school bus was late, he had a hard time processing his feelings and fell to the ground. The assistant principal didn't hesitate, meeting LJ right where he was, hard concrete, dirt and all. That's phenomenal. I you know, love we that. see so many stories about parents disappointed in faculty and classmates, et cetera, and he's literally on the ground with that young man, literally at his level. So special. Spoke, spoke volumes to everyone who saw it and everybody even who sees it in times like this where we're sharing it with A Special people. moment. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of students, last week, students all across the United States participated in See You at the Pole, 
It's a prayer event that encourages students to go to their school flagpoles and pray for their schools, their communities, and the nation. Yeah, not many know how it started. It all began back in 1990 when a small group of teenagers in Burleson, Texas, came together for a Disciple Now weekend. One night, the students were burdened for their friends and felt compelled to pray. They went to the school flagpoles and prayed for their friends, schools, and leaders. And those teenagers placed a vision in the hearts of youth and leaders across Texas for students to pray on the same day every year and named it See You at the Pole. As you can see in the picture, students from all around the United States are following in their footsteps. Each year, more than 3 million students from more than 20 countries around the world participate in this annual event. Some students pray and a few worship, like this group from TJH School in Frederick, Maryland. The little girl uh, you saw all alone at the flagpole there is 12-year-old Ariana Roca from Houston, Texas. And she says, Jesus sacrificed a lot for us, so I'm going to stand up for him. People stand in long lines alone for sports tickets, so you shouldn't have to feel embarrassed to stand alone for what you believe in. Wow, just wow. I mean, like, can we clone her? She is right? a brave, courageous soul, isn't she? Unbelievable. Following her heart's Hats commitment. off to her. And I saw a young boy who was doing the same thing at another school, all alone out there, but so sure of what he believed and wanting to honor God that he stood alone at the flagpole. I think that's amazing. And a child shall lead them, Amen. right? Very inspirational. Amen. Well, speaking of which, coming up, what does it take to grab God's attention? Author and pastor Derek Greer shares different characters whose faith and actions made God stop just for them. You don't want to miss him. It's up next. Stay with us. Derek Greer is leading one of the fastest growing churches in the nation. But his journey to faith in Christ was a road filled with turmoil and questions. So what changed? Take a look. Derek Greer, founding pastor of Grace Church, one of the fastest growing ministries in the nation, wanted to know why God seemed to stop and pay attention to some while bypassing others. You know, I have two boys. And, uh, you know, sometimes we put them in the crib when they were little and they cry. We ignore them <laughs> and they'll stop crying. But then you hear that cry, <laughs> that you'll go through a wall to get to your child. And what I'm talking about in this book is that cry that causes God to stop everything he's doing, if you will, to make sure he tends to his child. In his book, When God Stops, Pastor Greer shares personal details from his journey of faith from Islam to Christianity. He also examines eight people in the Bible that got the Lord's undivided attention and how God also wants to stop for you. Well, Derek Greer joins us now. Welcome to the show. Good to be with you, Andrew. We're thrilled to have you. Talk about this concept of God stopping for us. What do you mean? Absolutely. Well, actually, the incarnation was God stopping. God stopped exclusively being the Word and added humanity to deity, and He walked amongst us. But throughout the book, uh, When God Stops, I talk about eight characters in the Bible who Jesus stopped for. Now, here's the deal. There were tens of thousands of people that Jesus bypassed. Um, actually, some of the miracles that happened in the book of Acts were people that did not get healed under Jesus' ministry, uh, which is amazing because the man that was by the temple gates, he was at the temple gates when Jesus passed and went through. Um, and uh, so in, in the book, um, my goal is to help people get results. And um, why did these folks get results while others did not have the same impact on their lives left by Jesus. What did you find when you explored this? What did they do that got Jesus' attention? There was, there was, some common, there was a common thread, if you will, that ran through each of these characters. Number one, all of them willing to get past the crowd. Secondly, all of them willing to deal with obstacles. And thirdly, they all had a whatever it takes attitude. Take the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, here's a woman that actually, technically, she sinned all the way to Jesus. 
she really wasn't supposed to be out of her home. She was unclean. She was supposed to, you know, stand at a distance and yell, unclean, unclean. But instead of uh, uh, doing what uh, uh, the law and the rabbis required, uh, she was out in the crowd. And uh, the Bible says she uh, touched Jesus. Now, considering the, the context there, she had to get through a very, very aggressive crowd to get to Jesus. But she did whatever it took, which probably meant she got down on her knees, she crawled, she was probably kicked, stepped on. Uh, and when she got to Jesus, she touched Jesus. Uh, there was a lot of folks touching him, but this was a touch of faith. It was a different touch. It's about pursuit. It was about, yes. She pursued him no matter the cost. And uh, the comforting thing about this is, again, this woman probably sinned all the way to Jesus and didn't stop her from receiving from him. Now, I'm not celebrating sin, of course, but what I want folks to understand is you don't have to be a perfect person to get results from God. When she touched him, it was a different touch. And that touch released the healing power of Jesus. And as I recall, he said, who touched me? Absolutely. Now he knew who touched him, mm -hmm. but he was making a point. Yeah, he's making a point. And he wanted to celebrate the woman that just pressed through that crowd, got over all those obstacles and still trusted him. And many of us today, you know, if there's a few obstacles of people in the crowd saying, hey, you know what, you don't belong here, we'll give up, but not this woman. Who else in scripture really stood out to you in these when God stops moments? Zacchaeus is another one. Zacchaeus was, you know, uh, enemy number one. He was uh, uh, an accomplice to Rome. He was working for the Romans against his own people. And um, he was also a very wealthy man, the Bible says. And in that period of time, uh, wealthy people were typically um, uh, being harmed in public. Well, if you didn't have uh, enough bodyguards, you were, you were off the home. So the short of it was, some of Jesus' own disciples were zealots, which meant they were folks that were opposed to the ruling class. So if any of the members of the ruling class were in public, often uh, they'd be stabbed, sometimes they'd be poisoned, there would be a poison dart with a, you know, poison at the end, and no one would know who did it because it was a crowd. So for Zacchaeus to go into this crowd was a big deal. He was really risking his life. And then not only that, the Bible says he was a small man, meaning he could not see Jesus because of the crowd. And that's important. Sometimes the crowd that surrounds Jesus makes it difficult for people to see the Christ. But that didn't stop Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, what he decided to do, he would run uh, ahead of the crowd, and then he climbed a tree. Now, in this time in history, uh, only children and slaves ran. So for Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus to run, he's like, I don't care what you think about me. I don't care about my station. I want to see Jesus. And then he climbed up the tree, and what did he do? He got out on a limb. And often faith is spelled R-I-S-K. I think John Wimber said that uh, the first time. Um, and uh, only when he was in his spot and he did all of those things, when Jesus got to, to the, the NIV calls it the spot. When Jesus got to the spot, he stopped and looked up and says, Zacchaeus, I'm going to be with you today in your house. And that must have shocked people. Absolutely. That he would desire to spend time with them. Absolutely. Uh, you know, everyone started whispering because, you know, Zacchaeus is enemy number one. Now, why is Jesus, uh, you know, reaching out to this man? Not only that, in that culture, for Jesus to invite himself to someone's house implied relationship because it's a very formal culture. You didn't just invite yourself to someone's house. So he was basically saying, this is my friend. So it was huge, but he could not ignore Zacchaeus' faith. It was screaming out from that limb. And sometimes the point is you got to get out on the limb and you got to run ahead, ignore the crowd to get in position to receive all that God has for you. Are you an unlikely candidate to have such a thriving church in Northern Virginia based upon your journey to faith? I mean, you had a lot of resistance to Christianity, Yes. did you not? Yes. Well, as a kid, I'm, I'm a child of the, the 70s and integration was new. So there was a lot of uh, racial tension. And um, I kind of grew up with this mindset, us versus them. and. Um, with that, by the time I went to college, um, the Nation of Islam had prominent positions, particularly on Fridays uh, in front of the student center, and they'd preach. And uh, they would say, uh, you know, the Christianity is a white man's religion, on and on and on. And they'd make fun of Christianity. And uh, my opinion was, you know what, that's, there's probably some truth to it, because if our ancestors, particularly in states like South Carolina, where uh, they outnumbered uh, their captors, if perhaps they didn't have the turn of the cheek mentality, uh, we wouldn't have found ourselves in that situation for so, so long. So I was an opponent of Christianity until I had my own God encounter. God stopped for me. And uh, I, I pursued you. We've talked about yes. people pursuing God, yes. but you had a vision. Absolutely. And what was that? Well, I was in my dorm room, um, and I talk about this in the book, When God Stops. Uh, but the short of it was I was in class. 
I felt something I didn't quite understand, but actually it was conviction. I realized, you know what, I'm separate from God. Someone's praying for me, obviously. They probably heard one of my speeches. I was a student activist. And somebody obviously got on the knees. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to thank them, you know, and I appreciate it. But anyway, I got back to my dorm room because I felt something I couldn't understand. And um, in my room, I saw a man in a gown. And all he said was, this is it. And I felt the presence of God. And I knew that this is it was referring to that presence. And what God was saying to me is, Derek, this is what you've been pursuing all of your life. And now it's time for you to embrace me. Well, we are glad that the Lord pursued you, and this book is phenomenal, and uh, your church is really impacting the nation and the world, and we're grateful to have you here God on bless the show. You. Uh, for more with Derek, get his book. It's called When God Stops, Faith That Gets the God's Attention, and it is available nationwide. And we'll be back with more 700 Club Interactive right after this. Stay with us. In states across America, pro-life groups are pursuing a strategy to end abortion. They're passing laws aimed at going all the way to the Supreme Court and hoping to convince the justices to overturn the ruling that legalized abortion. But in Texas, the state where Roe v. Wade originated, a medical clinic is using a different approach. 9.30 in San Antonio and it's already hot. In order to appreciate the power of Christ, these women are getting ready for their day. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Our sin caused a rift between us and him. So great is the holiness of our God. They worship and praise. We finished abortion uh, recovery with Angela and she, she's here. Preparing them for a calendar full of chances to save lives. Well, let's get after it. They give the day to God. We pray, oh God, that she will keep her divine appointment at one, that she would see that this is a child and not a product of conception, and that she will give this child life. Father, we pray for life for this child. Amen. Amen. It's a daily ritual here at Life Choices Medical Clinic, a place where these professionals never know what needs they'll be asked to meet. Sometimes it's practical, sometimes it's spiritual, sometimes it's emotional. It's kind of diaper central. It was intended to be our education room. When Charity Farrar started at the clinic nearly 10 years ago, she says it was great at handing out diapers. From the front door, they come up this hall, and this is the staging area. But when they started offering medical services to women and eventually men, their influence multiplied. This room here is our ultrasound room. I love this room. It's my favorite room probably in the whole building. God does amazing things in this room. Here at Life Choices Medical Clinic, women can get a pregnancy test, get a free ultrasound to see pictures of their baby, get prenatal care and counseling, all within a few steps down this hallway. Our goal really as the clinic is to make sure that they know they're fully supported throughout their pregnancy. That's sometimes a big help if they're choosing between life and termination, knowing that they have that continuity of care gives them a secure feeling. They even offer testing and treatment for sexually transmitted diseases. If they're here for STI testing and treatment, then we talk to them about that. And what are their risks and the exposure that they have? And what can we do to prevent that? Oh, by the way, what does God say about all of this? Ellen Leone has honed her skill of discernment. This afternoon, she gets the chance to show that abortion-minded mom pictures of her baby. It's really just letting God take over in the moment, too, because, you know, he's active in the room and just seeing the Holy Spirit move there move their hearts is just a, it's a blessing to see. This clinic and hundreds of others across the country are proving critics wrong, who say pro-life activists stop caring about women after they choose life for their babies. Life Choices supports some moms until their children Here reach kindergarten. <laughs> and last year, the clinic witnessed nearly 120. Oh, these are brown. Brown and blue. Professions yeah. of faith. We love it when our patients ask us if they can have a Bible. Our number one mission is to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Everything else is secondary to presenting the gospel. My personal philosophy is that if we save the mother eternally, 
we save that baby because the mom has a change of heart. It's wonderful in being in that we have the freedom to share our faith. It's not by any means coercive or, or anything that we do there, but where we can live like human to human and really connect with patients. And now Farrar wants to take this so hopeful model across live. Texas. Working with four other organizations, Life Choices aims to serve 100,000 women and save 10,000 babies in just five years. Abortion started in Texas. We want to end it in Texas. Abortion is an atrocity. Abortion is not health care. It's not health care for the mother and certainly not health care for the child. But life, Jesus came that we might have life and have life abundantly. That starts now. So what about that abortion-minded mom Farrar and her staff prayed for? After her appointment, she decided to keep her baby. Folks at this clinic have learned the more contact they have with a woman, the more likely she is to keep her baby, and the better equipped she is for motherhood. Jennifer Wish on CBN News, San Antonio. I think it's genius for women to be able to see the child growing and moving and breathing in and out, sometimes sucking his thumb, covering his eyes. I mean, it's a baby. Makes yeah. quite a difference. And is there any more divisive issue in America than abortion? Perhaps not. And of course, you've got all the legal wrangling that goes on with the Supreme Court and people on each side of the issue. And then people may stop caring about the individuals mm -hmm. who are involved. I loved how in this story, they talked about the accusation that many pro-lifers forget about the mom after they've yes. made the decision to keep their baby. And, and this organization, through prayer, is going to stick with this mom and child and making a difference in leading them. Absolutely. And I think it's so wonderful. You know, in Scripture, uh, of course, she shared John 10, 10 there, that Jesus said he came that we might have life and have it abundantly. But, you know, it also says that he knew you before you were even formed in your mother's womb. You are a God idea. And so appreciating life mm -hmm. and celebrating it, really. And that's what I feel like this place is not just doing itself, but teaching the moms to do, that they carry the gift within them. It's pretty special. Yeah, and it's a reminder, too, that it's not just a political Political issue that these moms and dads or fathers and mm -hmm. babies involved. I mean, Jesus loves all. Yes. And we can get so caught up sometimes in the political wrangling about it that the individuals and the hearts involved get forgotten. So, wonderful organization. I encourage uh, everyone to be in prayer Absolutely. for them as they go about what they're doing. And we leave you as Terry uh, referenced this scripture, Psalm 139, verse 13 through 14. For you formed my inward parts, you covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. And as always, we wanna remind you if you need prayer for anything in your life, anything at all, you can call us at 800-700-7000. We would love to pray for you here at CBN. Just give us a call, let us know your need. For Terry Muson, I'm Andrew Knox. We'll see you next time, bye-bye.